Rafiki in the garage. Duck under the canoe. So, uh, my girlfriend got me some goodies. And I decided to put them on BT here. It's, uh, I'm very afraid to drop this bike. One of the reasons is if you have an R1200 GS, you know, or I think an RT, or oh, the RT has some fairings sticking out. I still think these things are just big, sore pumpkins waiting to be hit. And since they're your valve covers on your cylinder heads, not a great idea. I've also been told that if you hit these things, they can slip up and down, causing leaks and that kind of stuff, even even if it didn't rupture a hole in it or something. And they're kind of lightweight aluminum. Here's a little scratch there from the buckle on my boot. I laid my boot up here on a longer ride once. So, they're fairly uh, touchy. So at any rate, I um, haven't modified this bike hardly at all. I recently put some, oh, sorry about the backlight there, rocks risers on. And I'll try and post something like that. And ta-da! That's what my girlfriend got me. Okay, she also got me a nice tool roll uh, to carry on the bike. So that I'll have some ability to control all these things I'm messing with. But, uh... I think she also knew I'd need this one because if we look close, you realize, oh, it's been down once. Can you see all the scratches on the cylinder head under there? I didn't have this one on there yet. I just put it on. But thankfully, the cylinder head is not uh, compromised, or the valve cover is not compromised. But it is all scratched up underneath there. So, that should help. And uh, I thought I'd make this quick video. It seems very easy to me, but I've benefited from people putting videos online. And I thought, well, just because it seems easy to me, it may not seem easy to everybody. This is incredibly simple. Uh, little rubber bumpers there. They don't actually suggest you uh, you have them touching. They suggest you pull it out this way. So a little slider there, and they suggest you pull it as far out as possible. Um, three bolts, one here, one there, and over here on the front, one there. Those bolts are already in your head, um, which this section of it would be the head. But they don't do anything. Uh, so don't worry about leaking any oil out or, or anything like that. And, uh, Come right on out with, I think, a T30. Do, do, do. So, if we go over here to the unprotected side, which might look a little bit better since there's not too much light over here. Is it a T30 on there? I don't think so. Okay, hang on. Okay, so, if you buy these from TourTech, and this is what they come as. It's uh, nicely wrapped up. I know there are many manufacturers of these as well as BMW has their own. And I suspect they all mount in the same spot. Hang on, I'll unpack it for us. Okay, so unpack. Switch hands here. This is what you get. It's, uh, this one's black anodized. By the way, anodizing aluminum, in case you don't know, isn't just a visual thing. It does make a very, very hard surface on the aluminum. I'm one of those people that always likes an anodized finish, whether it's a clear anodized or whether you have the colors on it. But since uh, this is the Rally Edition and most of my engine's black, I thought I'll go with the black anodized. At uh, any rate, three holes, three bolts. These replace the existing bolts, two little spacers. It's pretty simple. Uh, okay, where'd it go? And I checked. This one, and this one, and then the ones in the front. They're T30s, by the way. And... Ah, 
that's about all it takes to get it going. Doo -doo -doo. I dislike the torques personally, but and then you can just finger back them out. And there's nothing behind there, so assume these were designed in as a place to mount something. Stubby little bolt and washer you can set aside to put in your things you took off your very expensive bike bin. Yeah, I have one of those. It's fun to rummage through them every once in a while and try to figure out if uh, you can remember what it was. Second one. And I'll just move more. New goodies out of the way. And slide around here and find that third one. Wow, it's really hard to uh, locate your wrench in your hand in the bolt when you're looking through the video finder of a cheesy little smartphone. Okay, third one. And I don't know if we can see. There it is. It's just a hole. It uh, doesn't go anywhere. So nothing should be leaking out. I'm glad both sides are the same. Okay, let me get out the uh, new bolts. Okay, here's our new bolts. One shorty, two long ones. The two long ones go in the back. The two long ones get the spacers. The little shorty goes up front. They're all number four Allen or four millimeter Allen. Uh, so that's metric Allen. The little spacers, if you look at them, have a chamfered edge. That's right there. This inside circle, and I'm looking on the inside of the donut here, is very smooth, not chamfered. That one is. I really don't know why, but the instructions are explicit that that chamfered edge go against the cylinder head. So, as we come up here, that chamfered edge will go just like that. Chamfer under the cylinder head. Um, but other than that, it's that simple. Remember, Loctite is your friend, but uh, don't use it until you have this guy in place. Oh, I found the light there, didn't I? So, just bear with me. I have technical difficulties. Okay, so, it'll go on, Oop, just like that. The other one, I had to spread those bars back just a little bit by hand. It's a snug fit. It's not impossibly tight by any means, but um, as you can see, there's not much gap when I get in there to put it in. But uh, it's a good kind of snug fit. You don't wouldn't want it rattling around. So there you go. It's really that simple. Since I don't have four hands, I'm not going to uh, show you putting in all the nuts and bolts. But at this point, it's just bolts and spacers. One Allen wrench. They do not provide. Don't worry. Um, you should have a T30 in your toolkit maybe, and a, but no Allens. Uh, so you have to go find you a little metric Allen wrench. Unless of course you bought some pack, flat pack furniture somewhere, then you, you'll probably have one. At any rate, there you go. Worthwhile. It's easy to drop these bikes. I dropped mine taking it off the center stand on a slight angle and not paying enough attention until it was too late. Bye.